Jennifer Alderman, Ward 1. Alrighty, folks. Just a little bit here. There we go. Um, I just want to first of all thank the uh, the Women Voters Polling event. Thank you all for coming out and uh, taking ownership in democracy. It's great to see so many people out here tonight. Uh, I'd like to start my role as people here with a little quote from Thomas Jefferson. He says, "The care of human life and happiness, and not their destruction, is the first and only legitimate object of good government." Now, what we find is too many times politicians at the federal, state, and municipal level will oftentimes forget that they are elected by the people. You people here who are here today. And so I'm here to earn your vote. My priorities for Raytown, first of all, we have to promote new home ownership in this city. And we have realized that a growing majority of our citizens are over the age of 50, and that when these homes start going empty, when the baby boomer generation starts moving on to retirement villages or so on, that these homes are going to go empty and property values are going to fall. And then you know, new homeowners won't want to move into this city. Now, I personally just bought my home about eight months ago. I've lived in Raytown since I was 10. And in order to do this, we have to make sure that we promote policies that better the public image of Raytown to encourage young homeowners to move to the city and also to retain our students and youth that live here currently instead of seeing them move on to other metropolitan areas or to other cities within our metropolitan area. The second thing I'd like to see is community center, or at least the dialogue starting with, um, since the Raytown Y is starting to close, to see an open dialogue occur for Raytown to possibly get into the community center business. Um, it would help seniors be socially active, and also I feel like it would help encourage young families to move to this city because it provides youth and students with a venue to provide to do activities uh, independently and also for uh, schools, such as schools such as Raytown South or Raytown High School. Um, thirdly, and finally, my other big priority is that we have to provide the Raytown Police Department with the resources they require to do their job. Um, I personally have had an opportunity to go through Assistance Police Academy, which is a wonderful program, and uh, I would personally recommend it to anybody out there who's thinking about it for the next time around. And uh, I would like to maintain an open dialogue with the police department and police personnel and make sure that our officers have the resources they require and that they can do, perform their job safely and effectively. Um, secondly, I'd like to talk about why I'm qualified. Uh, personally, I feel like dedication and willingness to listen to everybody is a very important virtue of public service. And understanding that real leadership is not about who you know or how many connections you might have, but providing an independent voice for your constituents and listening to those constituents. So that's the most important trait that anybody in public office could have. And thirdly, what legacy I would like to leave in this city. First of all, I would like, as stated earlier, I'd like to help Raytown transition into a new generation of homeowners. I would really like to see where our property values stay strong over time, and that's very crucial. We have pro policies that will promote that. And also, I would help, like I said, I would want to help establish a successful community center in this city, so that way our seniors can be socially active, our youth have something to do, and that way it just creates a better city in general. Now. Looking back to the quotation I provided to you earlier, and Thomas Jefferson, when he said, the care of human life and happiness, and not their destruction, is the first and only legitimate object of good government. Now, that's what we have to look for here. When you cast your vote, in the when you cast your votes on April 2nd, you have to ask yourself, are they going to help this community? Are they going to help us with our infrastructure, with our, with our life, with our happiness? And you should cast your vote for wherever you feel We'll help you that on. Uh, we'll help you with that on Tuesday or next Tuesday. Thank you. And uh, one. <coughs> I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters, the Chamber, and everyone that's here tonight. Uh, my name is Richard Tash, and I am running for Alderman or One. I've lived in the community for 20 years. My wife Teresa and I have been active in the community. My services to the community, including mentoring programs like Youth Friends and Junior Achievement. I know that public safety is a concern for all of us, and that is why I am an active member of Ray County Citizens Crime Watch. I am a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, my experience, leadership of 25 years in the financial industry will help drive fiscal responsibility for our city. Specific areas that I bring to the board would be as a compliance manager, currency controller, purchasing director, process improvement manager. This, in addition to my service as secretary on the Jackson County Public Water District Number Two, 
or, or as a result of my compliance experience, I question why there was a need to spend $11,000 to build additional storage for old records. The findings were that these records were way past the record retention schedule, and we saved over $10,000 by having these records destroyed versus spending the money to build and maintain additional storage. My commitment to you as Alderman is I will fight for your property value, public safety, by proactive code enforcement, attracting unique businesses, and retaining those that we already have here. This is accomplished by increased interaction with all departments to identify code issues so they may be quickly addressed as proven by the broken window syndrome. When properties are maintained, it helps to reduce crime, making the criminal element feel unwelcome. Through open communications with local businesses, we hope to provide guidance and other support tools in an effort to retain these same businesses. And whereas we are a family community, we need to look at new businesses that generate sales tax, provide a positive family-oriented community by adopting ordinances that other communities have to limit the distance between business types like title loans and payday loans. I will be accountable, but physically responsible and accessible as aldermen. This is accomplished by increasing transparency through screening all city meetings allowing people to view the meetings on their schedule at home from a friend's home or the library. I will continue to give back through active community service, making me visible and accessible to not only those in Ward 1, but the community as a whole. And in today's society, there's too much focus on a legacy to only further one's political growth instead of focusing on the future betterment of those that they serve. Therefore, my legacy is to do the best job possible for the citizens of Red Detail. I want to thank you for your time and your consideration. April 2nd. <laughs>